All right, welcome to the Goalkeeper Podcast. I can't do my tagline anymore because John thinks it's stupid. It is. So but the if, tagline is dropped. If you guys think it wasn't stupid, uh, you're wrong, but also let <laughs> us know. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, this week, uh, what, what day is it right now? Today is... Who cares? Wednesday. Today is Wednesday. We're going to be up Monday, so... Um, this week, we did Sleepwalkers. Yes, Stephen we King's did. Sleepwalkers. It holds a 5.3 out of 10 on IMDb, a 20% on Rotten Tomatoes, 38% on Metacritic, and a whopping 83 on Google. And then uh, here's Somehow. the other thing as well. Uh, its budget was $15 million. Yep. And it made $30.5 million, so it doubled its money back. Yeah, so it was a hit. <laughs> um, I had never seen this movie before. I had didn't really know much about it other than that it was a Stephen King movie and it had something to do with cats. Um, and and that was, that's what it delivered. And yeah, that's exactly what it was. Uh, so we start off with Charles and his mother Mary. Yep. And they're looking at some... Well, no. First, we start off with the cops. Sorry. We start off with the cops, one being Mark Hamill. Yep, and an uncredited uh, cameo. Yeah. Uh, and they're at a the fucking crime scene or whatever, and they see a bunch of cats hanging, hanging from hanging yep, from a tree. And guts hanging out. Yeah, and, and guts stuff. hanging out. So a bunch of slaughtered cats hanging from this tree, and they're all like, what the fuck's that about? And they walk into the house, and there's... And they, there's the great line. I already forgot it. Oh, it was, um, seems like, uh, no one's been in this house for a hundred years. Oh, yeah, even though there was, like, nothing <laughs> wrong with the house, like. It was abandoned, Yeah, but... it was a, there was nobody in it, that was about it, otherwise, like, it was a perfectly normal house, and considering that they had probably recently just left that house, like, because they were, you know. Right. It couldn't have been in that bad a shape. No. Anyways, so, they open the door. Cat jumps out and then a, a dead body falls out. A, a young, a younger girl. And can they they figured that out because she had braces. Um, I I assume that's why they they thought she was a young girl with a rose in her hair and like it's like totally aged as fuck. Like it looks like a fucking mummy. Mummy, yeah. Um, and it fades to credits. And when we open back up from credits, we see Charles and his mother Mary, and there's a bunch of cats in their yard. Um, and this... she explains that she hates cats, or she's trying to catch yeah. them in bear claws. They don't really uh, uh, bear traps, and they don't really uh, explain why. I don't know why I said bear claws; those are donuts. <laughs> uh... <laughs> uh, but anyways, um, yeah. So, um, but this is after we see Charles carving a T into his arm for Tanya yeah. who we'll meet later in the movie and he has a big heart around her picture in the yearbook and so Charles goes downstairs and then we see the cats at the window and his mom's sitting there and they start doing a really really close sensual talk Dance. and yeah and at this point I was not aware <laughs> that this was his mother they you know, they don't make any I thought it was his Girl? Girlfriend, wife, because I didn't know how old this Charles guy was. So I thought when he was circling or harding Tanya in the yearbook that he was like, had an obsession for another lady, which I mean, he kind of does, and we'll get to that. Um, but no. <laughs> so they start dancing, oh. and then it's revealed that this is his mother. And then it gets real sensual, even closer. They start talking weird, like how a mother and son would not talk to each other and then they start fucking making out like hardcore yeah. and he brings her upstairs and they fuck yeah they um, fuck good <laughs> cause cause near as you can sort of tell there's like this sort of vampiric energy between the two of them of like energy and life force and I get energy from you I s suck you Use, yeah, I didn't really whatever. understand that I, I, too much. Something like that. Yeah, the whole s s soul, the feeding thing didn't really make sense to me in this movie. But, so they fuck. 
And then Charles the next day goes to school. No, he goes. He yeah. tells us. He tells us. He tells his mom. There's this Tanya girl. Yeah. And that she's pure, and he's gonna ask her out on a date. So then we then we cut to Tanya at the movie theater. Yep. Um, and Tanya's dancing away to the mashed potato. I think. Is that what it's called? Do you love me? Do you love me? It's called. Well, they say mashed potato in that song. Yes. That is a uh, lyric. So she's dancing like an idiot, and then she runs into Charles, um, who asks for Mr. Pip. It's a popcorn. Yeah. And then she obliges, get, for some reason, gives it to him free, even though she knows nothing about this dude. Yeah. Except for that they're in the same class together, I guess. What? And then she thinks he's cute, I think. How did he get a yearbook? I, and yeah, anyways, uh, because he had to have been there for a year because it was the end of the school year, and he has he had just moved there. How did he get a yearbook? I don't know, but anyways, um, <laughs> anyway, so he's at school. Yeah. The next day, he has the same class as Tanya. It's like some creative writing class or something, and he basically tells the story of what him and his mother are are the, the sleepwalkers, um. And the class already likes it, I guess. The teacher's kind of impressed by it, who is Otho from... Uh, yeah, the actor that played Otho in Beetlejuice. Yeah, uh, he really liked it. Until he gets fucking dissed from his box theory thing. <laughs> Anyways, nice. so he tells the story about the sleepwalkers to his class for his creative writing project. Um, they ask him where he's from. He says he's from Paradise Falls, Ohio. Um uh, what happens next? Um, basically, uh, he what what's established through talking and talking to her, uh, talking to Tanya and talking to the mom and what have you. Neo is that. <laughs> Neo that, that uh, idiot that sorry cat <laughs> that Charles uh wants to basically take her life force of sorts. For himself and his mom, who keeps saying she's starving. And yeah, she needs to feed. But anyways, um, and so I he was driving, I think, to go meet Tanya, and uh, Mister Follow uh, Otho kind of follows up behind him and and uh, basically says that he has suspicions about him and that all of his stuff is fake and there's no Paradise yeah. Falls, Ohio, and and. Uh, basically reveals he's like well i don't really have anything and then i don't know if he was trying to if he was thinking about like sexually, sexually assaulting yeah. that's him. the vibe yeah I got. like you can pay in other ways of that it was really weird but I, but you didn't tell the box story the box story is not interesting yeah but that's basically what sets him off and gets him all curious for some reason no because yeah because like he seems to really like this Charles kid because of his story. He goes, oh, he's such a creative young writer. I have this great student in my class. And he says some line about how a box has four sides or something. And then Charles corrects him and goes, actually, Mr. Fallow, a box has six sides. And the whole class erupts in laughter. And then after that, he's just like, fuck this piece of shit. <laughs> and he just but hates him. And then I'm, I'm assuming at that point, that's where he digs in and is I like, guess. I'm going to find out more shit about this kid because he corrected me on how many sides a box has. But Fuck this guy. Looks in his records, finds out he's from Paradise Falls and that doesn't <laughs> exist. He did some hardcore research because Google wasn't around me back then. So, like, I don't know what yeah. kind of digging he had to do to figure out all this stuff about this kid. But he figures that all the shit's fake and gets so pissed off about it. And then wants to fuck him or something in his car. And I didn't get it. But anyways, he ends up uh, snapping that fucking guy's hand off. Yeah, just rips his hand off. Um, oh, what does he say when his hand gets ripped off? I don't remember the fuck. one-liner. Cause there was, I forget the Because I think the too. other thing was... I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. When well, he's, no, but that's that's when a he's little bit later. When he's, yeah, okay. So I don't remember the one-liner that Charles says. Um... Something like gave him my hand. Yeah, some it's kind some of like some cheap easy one. But so, as 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 that guy's <laughs> running in the woods, and as he's being chased, uh, by uh, what's his face, the, Charles. Yeah, Charles, uh, he ends up talking, going, "I'm sorry." Yeah, but not even like not even like that. It's more like, "I'm sorry." 
It was pretty funny. It was like a really weak ass, I'm sorry. But um, anyways, he gets he gets killed. Yeah, and it looks like he's just nuzzling his neck. Yeah. It's the worst eating I've ever seen in a movie. Who I don't know who eats like that from side to side. Yeah, it kind of it kind of no looked blood. like the it kind of looked like the gratuitous sex scene from Wayne's World when he jumps on Cassandra. Yeah, it looked just like that. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, Charles ends up taking uh her to their first date at a no. What you're missing a giant part? What the whole cop thing? That's not till later, isn't it? No, that's before the cemetery scene. You're going, you're going to the cemetery scene, aren't you? Really? Yeah. Let's... So, after he's driving away oh, from right, killing right. Mr. Fallow, we we meet, uh, oh, what's the officer's name? Oh, um, Andy Simpson. Is that the actor's name or is that the character's name? The character. Okay, so Officer Simpson as Cat Clovis. So, Charles is speeding down the highway, and the, the police officer... Officer Simpson sees him. That doesn't seem right. Are you sure it's Officer Simpson? Yes. That seems wrong. It's anyway, <laughs> if I get shit for this in the comments, I'm gonna be so pissed it's off. Simpson. Okay, fine. I'll believe you. So Charles is speeding in his blue Trans Am, right? He yes. has a blue Trans Am. Speeding. Officer Simpson sees him. Him and Clovis take off after him. And he's like getting all cocky. Like, oh no. He calls him back. And he's like, do you want backup? He's like, no, nah, I don't need it. I got this punk ass. So then he's driving, speeding. Charles won't pull over. Does like a 180 on him. Goes the other way. It's a car chase in a horror movie, basically. Yeah, but some shit happens. Right. So the Officer Simpson catches up to him in the car. And they're going side by side. And he's telling him to pull over and shit. And then he sees his face morph first into what I think was a baby, and then a cat creature, and then what we see at the end of the movie, and then some like weird bald demon head thing. It looked like an animorphs thing. I, it yeah. looked really weird. I'm not gonna say it looked bad. It it looked but... it looked like ba- okay. The best way to describe it in the technology is uh. The ending of uh, Michael Jackson's black or white video, uh, but you insert some fucking monsters into that bullshit. Yeah. 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 The, yeah. So then the chase goes on for a little while after where Clovis looks at uh, Charles. Charles gets scared because it's cats a- are the sleepwalkers' weaknesses. So he gets, he gets freaked out. Charles ends up pulling ahead and turn, turns away into a gravel road. Somehow loses the officer by a good while for some, somehow. I don't know how fast he had to be going, but later in the scene, we see Officer Simpson later, later in the movie says they're both going 90. I think most cars top out at like what, like 120 or something. Somewhere but anyways, he, Charles somehow pulls like at least a good mile or two ahead of him and then pulls away into a dirt thing and he's kind of stops the car and turns the car and himself invisible. Yeah. Uh, which, fine. Sure. It gets weirder later. So, uh, Simpson pulls up. Fucking car's gone. And goes, I don't know how it got away from me, Clovis. And Clovis, we see the perspective from the cat's eyes. It's like this red hue. And you can see Charles sitting in, in his car. car. In the blue car. Um, and the cat's hissing at him. And so, Simpson's just like, oh, he's fucking gone. So, then... Gets in his car and takes off. Doesn't know what to do. So then, Charles gets rid of the invisibility cloak or whatever. And turns <laughs> turns his car into a red convertible. Right. My problem with this is... So these sleepwalkers are probably like centuries years old. Yeah. Like... And somehow, they just have this inherent ability to... Even from a distance, as we see later in the movie, make their vehicles invisible and or change make, model, and color. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is an oddly specific power to have for yes. a cat vampire thing. But whatever. I digress. So Simpson goes back to the police station, tells his story. Their explanation is that he probably got dirt in his eye or something. So then he's because like, he said his face was blurry. Yeah. Which is not what happened. No. 
but I don't know why he's, he's driving re- ninety. Yeah. Okay. But they're whatever. Doesn't matter. I'm not gonna get stuck on this. But anyways. Scene. So then, Officer tells his story or whatever, and then he says, "Well, on the drive home, he's gonna look for this kid and he's gonna get him." He does not. Uh, then, then we see Charles. He comes over to Tanya. He, he gives Tanya a ride home from school one day, and Tanya decides, at, decides to take him up on the ride home, and decides to invite him into her room for some reason. Which normally when you drop someone off, you would just pull up and be yeah. like, okay, and I'll see you later. But she's like, and without even like them asking, he just follows her inside and she's like, oh yeah, this is fine. Come up to my room where there are panties everywhere. Her room <laughs> she, is a disaster, but only in the form of panties. <laughs> but she has to consistently hide. Yeah. Like all that they were missing was like her turning and then there happened to be like a dildo stuck to the wall that smacked him with the fucking <laughs> yeah. head. She's like, ooh. No, they didn't do that. But. No. So then he's looking at a uh, fucking. She shows him her mom does cemetery rubbings or something like the tombstone rubbings, and she shows him her her photography that she does, and they're looking at a picture of a road, <laughs> and he's like, "Man, you really capture things that you can't see anywhere else." A road, a road, and he's like, "I I would I would love to just be so deep." Yeah, it's so deep, and you can't see this shit anywhere. Except for the fucking road that you see everywhere that you were just that you drive on every fucking day, it wasn't anything special. It was literally just a road in like at some place. It was like a close up on the road. It wasn't like a scenery or nothing really. There were a couple no. trees maybe, but anyways, uh, he asked her out kind of on a no. She asked him on a date. Yeah, to go to, go to Homeland, the cemetery, the local cemetery. Yep, and do some rubbings. Yeah. Um, so Charles's mom, or Charles's mom, Tanya's mom comes down and they introduce him to Charles. She says he, he seems sweet and all that. And she got to be back by five the next day. So then he goes home to mother. Um, and mom's kind of annoyed in a way. Yep. Uh, hungry, jealous, and horny, I think all at once. Yeah. She's. Hold on, you take it. I got, I got a drink. Yeah, hungry, jealous, horny, uh, worried about the girl, if, whether she's pure, all this other basic bullshit. But... Is this where she starts slapping him around or not yet? No, that's... No, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, because she slaps him like five times and then they boink. Yeah, she starts slapping the fuck out of him around and then they fuck again. And then and then uh, <laughs> they cuts to the mirror and you can see them in their true forms in the reflection, but at the time it just giant kind of mole like, rat looking things. Kind yeah, of. but at the time it just looked like a meat sack. Yeah, some kind of meaty, fleshy, but ball sack with arms and legs. But anyways, uh, they uh, they the lovebirds go on their date to yeah, to homeland the cemetery, the cemetery. and uh, they very quickly start making out. And uh, he tries. Yeah, it wasn't to, really much of a date. No, it, it, it tries to suck her life force while kissing her, and but she could tell that there's something fucking wrong. Uh, she perceives she says she it, can't breathe. Well, and she also perceives first. it as like him being too aggressive, aggressive sexually. rather than necessarily this guy's a mutant. But anyways, uh, she smashes him in the fucking head with her camera, and uh, after he reveals his form. He reveals right, his form right. first. So his face turns into the cat monster thing. It looks like a weird cat werewolf kind of looking yeah. thing. And he starts he starts talking with an accent at this point. Whenever he's in monster mode, he starts talking like a surfer bro. Like I honestly think it's because times. of... Well, I, I think part of what throws his voice off to is just the prosthetics. Well, that, but he's... I mean, even his demeanor and everything just change. Well, I guess it would. Well, it could be oh, he's a shitty so, actor. Yeah, when, he start, when they start making out, he turns into Jack Nicholson from The Shining real fucking quickly. Like, yeah. it becomes from like... Come on! He's like almost conflicted because he thinks he really likes Tanya, so he doesn't really want to kill her. Um... And her mom him alludes at that kind of too. I mean, his mom alludes at that a little bit too. And so then he starts kissing her. And at first it's like, oh, maybe we should stop. Because in his mind, he's gonna be like, I don't want to kill her. I don't want to kill her. We should stop this. And then she's like, no, I don't want to stop. I want to get to know you. So they start making it harder. And then he just goes crazy. Like turns it up to like fucking 12. 
yeah. like super fast just like yeah i'm gonna fucking kill her now and just goes nuts yeah and reveals his true form she smashes him in the head with the camera like you said they fight for a while he gets a corkscrew to the eye yeah and he's trying to uh, suck her soul out and it's not really working for some reason yeah it just seems more like temporary <laughs> annoyance rather yeah. than necessarily killing yeah um but at that same moment when she starts to flee andy comes back and uh officer simpson yeah okay fine i'll give him some respect off deputy deputy officer oh sorry whatever something well we've never called him andy in the review before so people get confused anyways uh he he gets her into the car oh and i'll just at this point the blue trans amp oh it turns from a the red convertible that he turned into back into the blue trans am while they're on their day at the cemetery for Some some reason like the spell wears off or something i don't know but um, i don't know but anyways uh next coming up is another one-liner from hell uh that he all of a sudden out of nowhere uh i believe he's still in his true form but simpson gets a pencil it looks like stuck in his fucking ear yep that's cop kebab. Yeah, cop kebab. Just like that. Stupider um, than hell. Didn't really make sense. Not there's the one liners in we are pretty shit. Um Um but uh well uh So he's down for a little bit. Yeah, and Charles tries to continue to feed on Tanya. On Tanya, but then Clovis kind of saves the day a little bit. They're violently kind of scratching him in the Well no. Not yet. Because then Officer Simpson gets up. Yeah. Shoots him in the back. Turns around. Says another one-liner. Oh, you didn't fire a warning shot. shot. And then uh, walks up to him really casually, kind of. And shoots Officer Simpson doesn't do anything. Officer Takes Simpson. the gun, shoots Officer Simpson in the gut. He's done so. Yeah. He's dead. Um, then he turns back to go feed the rest of Tanya. Then right. Clovis pops out. And starts jumping on him, scratching the shit out of his face. So at this point, he's had a camera smash to his head. Corkscrew to the eye. Shot in the stomach. Um, and now the cat. And now the cat. And the cat's sort of the mortal, the the extremely dangerous thing we learn. But basically, Charles ends up uh, staggering back home to his mom. Um... And so she sees how fucked up he is and tries to tend to his wounds and blah, 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 blah. And through all of this, uh, the, the Don is able to get back home. They're getting in contact with cops. Everything is going on. And so the cops instantly go to try to raid uh, their house, yeah. uh, Charles's house and everything. Uh, the mom uses the invisibility thing to make them both invisible so the cops don't see shit when they come barging in. Um, and the other thing that's common through all this is that the amount of stray cats outside of their house are growing. Are growing. Then we see, Oh, we meet Ron Perlman at this point, too. Yeah. <clears throat> so we're in, like, already... We're, this this is this movie kind of blew by. It's, it's it's 91 minutes, but, it, I mean, we're already half... We're pretty much done with this review already. I we're guess. almost right at the end. Um, and Ron Perlman doesn't come in until, like, the last 20, 25 minutes. Right. So we, we meet Ron Perlman, who's Officer Soames or something, or Sheriff yeah. Soames. He must be from a different county or something because the the local cops don't seem yep. to like him. Very Captain much. Soames. Captain Soames. Uh, and he's great in this movie too. Uh, Rob Perlman's good in pretty much everything he's ever been in. He just adds like a adds like a layer of badassness to everything. Yeah. To me. Um, but uh, so we also see Tanya back at her house. Um, at this is after we they the unsuccessful raid. Of the Brady household, Charles and his mother's house, because they went invisible. He wasn't able to do it on his own, so his mother turns him invisible for right. him and the car. So then the officers go over to fucking Tanya's house, and that fucking cop, Horace, <laughs> is eating all the corn on the cob. Yeah. <laughs> which plays later into the film. Uh, she asked him if he wanted another ear of corn. The dad walks in. Doesn't presumably doesn't get any corn. Well, I don't know. I was just making a funny point. I don't know. Presumably, that, maybe because it looked like the dad had just gotten home. 
from but, somewhere. So when we see Tanya, she's upstairs taking a bath, and her parents are concerned that she's been up there for too long. But it doesn't seem like she wants to come down until uh, Clovis. Clovis comes, the cat, um, because she feels comfortable, because that's what scared uh, Charles away from her. So she felt more comfortable with that, so she stayed in the bath. She has a vision about Charles in the bath, and she wakes up from her little vision or whatever. Yeah. Um, um, then we see Mary, the mother, walking over with a vase of roses. Yep, and she uh, bashes... Uh, bashes Tanya's bashes dad dads in the face. Right in the fucking head. Uh, ends up uh, killing also a bunch of... Oh, and she takes his arm. Right. No. No. No, that's a different guy. I got that mixed no, up. No, um, but... So then the mother walks over and goes, What'd you do to my husband? And tosses her ass out a window. Right, and then the <laughs> and then she goes to the deputies and want, and kills them by bashing their heads together. But the first time, <laughs> looks like they're just going cheek to cheek. Yeah, it's really soft. And then she bashes their heads together the second time. It's a little bit harder that time. It's a little bit more stiff. But that's what but, evidently did those guys. Yeah, and they were done. And But anyways, she ends up uh, kidnapping Tanya and taking her back to her house because she's like, Charles needs to feed. He's almost dead or whatever. Well, you forgot about the corn cob part. Oh, yeah. She <laughs> stabs so, a cop with a corn cob. She okay, kills Horace uh, with a corn cob. And that's where the line, corn on the cop, could have came in. But or, they didn't do or, it. Yeah, there was no clever one And she busts his that. fucking arm, too. Like, yeah. Really disgusting. It just twists his arm and his bone fucking pops out of his skin. It looks really good, actually. Um. So then, yeah. So she's in the car with Tanya. Tanya wakes up and she goes, where are we going? Um, and the mother is going, we're going, going to feed you to Charles. Yeah. Um, uh, she tries to get out of the car for a second while it's moving, which is going to kill you anyways. <laughs> with how fast they're going they right. get over there and charles is in rough shape uh he's he's still in his like his weird cat form but he looks much older much yeah. more bloated and just gooier i guess it just looks bad he looks like shit yeah um and with her telepathic i guess abilities i i don't turns on the record player to the song we heard at the beginning the song they danced to before they fucked right. at the beginning of the movie um it's apparently yeah. charles's favorite song where he kind of just revives yeah just gives sorts. him some extra energy some for some reason it's not really explained um and she forces tanya to dance with him for a bit for a little bit um so they do he pops up gets like a new spring in his step or something Mm. Um, for a second, I, whatever. I mean, he uh, pops up like a, I okay, yes, okay. Um, so then they're dancing for a little bit. Um, does he try to suck her soul out again at this yeah. point? Yeah, okay. So he does that, but then she gouges him in the fucking eyes, and that apparently, because when you think about it, I don't think we see him again. No, we don't. So That's it. evidently. Plunging his eyes fucking killed him. But they him. already did that with the corkscrew in the cemetery. I, I don't fucking know. So they already... So she, she kills Charles by digging her thumbs into his eyes. But she did that in the cemetery with a fucking, like, wine corkscrew. Well, right, but, but this so was the black... So why didn't that kill him? But this was the black eyes, like, in his natural form. And they popped like gushers. Yeah, it looked good. I, I don't know why that killed him, though, but... I don't know either. Um, But yeah, so then the cop... A cop shows up. The sheriff shows up. He has a shotgun in tow. And, uh... The mother runs at him. And she's she's looking deformed at this point now, too. Um, and the cop blasts her in the stomach. Um, doesn't really phase her whatsoever. And, and then, also at uh, the same point... Clovis uh, comes. I was gonna say, at that same point, Clovis has entered the house... By breaking open a window and running by, in the house. By punching the window and it exploding. The cat, Clovis, punches a window. Zoe, get out! <laughs> but. Sorry. Anyways, uh. <laughs> okay. Um. Fucking Clovis. Yeah, and anyways, the cat's, uh. Oh, uh. That, uh. Sh- that same, uh, cop that's out there. Ends up getting uh, 
picked up by uh, Mary and she ends up fucking impaling him on a, picket right on a fence. fucking picket fence. Yeah, no. so the sheriff got got. He's sheriff's dead. Um, more cats kind of come and attack the mother while Tanya's in the police car trying to turn the car and the car won't start but she's really not even trying to turn the keys it doesn't look yeah like. she's kind of frazzled at the very yeah. least uh, so um she gets the car going all the cats that are attacking the mother in her like final form which is like what we saw when they were fucking in the mirror when they were like these big yeah. meat bags we see their her full form she and gets scratched so much that she just bursts she just into bursts flames. into flames and says that um, Tanya killed her only son, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so the Tanya backs up, hits a tree right away, doesn't go anywhere. Mom's dead. And she basically just sits there. And oh, we missed Ron Perlman's death. Clove. Oh, she, about hit, Just bites his fingies. Yeah, so Ron Perlman comes up when she's, when she's dragging, when he's dragging Tanya, when Tanya, she's dragging right. Tanya away. And fucking, yeah. Uh, she bites Ron Perlman's fingers off. And that's about it. I guess I just wanted to mention that. Just because you like Rod Perlman. Yeah. So he's really... I, I'm sure he's not dead, but... But anyways, uh, Tanya ends up hugging Clovis, and that's it. A roll credits. So, now that we've wrapped up the movie, this is, a, this is probably the shortest review we've ever done. Good. Um, I'm going to say it. I didn't hate this movie. Really? I didn't hate this movie. I had a good time watching it. I thought the effects were good for the most part. Um, it was well paced. Um, the dialogue wasn't great. The acting wasn't no. great. But I had a good time watching it. Like, I legitimately had a good time watching it. I was uncomfortable with the mother and son sex stuff. That was weird. But... I don't know, man. I kind of like this movie. <laughs> like, I didn't think it was bad. I kind of, I kind of, I kind of like well, it. Well, I, I'd watch it again. I'd show it to people and what? be like, "You gotta see this fucking movie." Let's bring up the other uh, reception, the sort of reception on this. Uh, All right. Steve Walker's received universal negative reviews from critics. Uh, reviewer John Kenneth Muir, I don't know, uh, praised the first first half of the film, stating. Steve Walker starts off in fine form as a serious, grim, involving horror film about the last two survivors of a species doing what they must to survive. Um, that the mom is incredibly sensual as the half-crazed mother who must f feed through the act of sexual intercourse with her son. He then says that the later half of the film devolves into a campy disaster. On Rotten Tomatoes, the film has a rating of 20%, blah, 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 blah. Uh, cinema, on uh, Cinema Score, the movie has an average rating of C+. I'd say it's about right. C Maybe a B-. minus. But that's nit being nitpicky. That's pretty close. But, what, but, are, what are your thoughts on this movie? Because I had not seen this going into it. You had before. Um, there was, there was... You obviously picked it for a reason. Right. Um, th when there are definitely some slower parts to it, but when this movie gets going and is crazy, there's at least I I would say there's at least three or four solid what the fuck moments. Yeah, and and they're not even what the fuck moments in terms of typical horror grotesque. So it's not yeah. like. Like, what the fuck, uh, critter, what the fuck creature, what the fuck kill. There are some of that. A good chunk of it is what the fuck in terms of, even though the acting isn't amazing, but character interaction. And so it was like an extra layer to it. And also, I, you know, I, I will say the biggest knock on this movie, I wouldn't necessarily say any part of this movie was genuinely scary. Like, I'm... No. I, I'm going to sleep fine tonight. I would I the best way to describe this is um see I feel I feel bad comparing cuz it's different authors but 
This movie was the best longest episode of Goosebumps I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. The TV yeah. series. Yeah, definitely. It reminded me a lot of that TV show. Mm-hmm. Just, uh, I would say, better. Yeah, even the way it was shot. It was shot like a Goosebumps episode, too. Yeah. Which is weird. Um, I'm going to give it, like, if I had to rate it out of, like, four stars, I would give it, like, a strong 2.5 out of four. Maybe a three. But I'm leaning more towards a strong 2.5 out of four stars for me i liked it i don't think it's a good movie by any stretch of the imagination but i didn't hate it i enjoyed myself i had a really good time watching it and it's one that i would watch again and it's one that i would recommend people watch like it's one that if i had a bunch of friends over and they're like what's a crazy what's a crazy fun horror we watch i might pick this one well i would say it'd be perfect i mean besides the incest it's not like a crazy horror film that could absolutely, like, turn people entirely off. Like, it's not like, oh, I want to watch a crazy horror film and be like, oh, you got to see Human Centipede. Or right. you got to see society. society or or something that you know has a lot of fucked up visuals. Right. But um, it's it's like, it's a, I could almost see this as like being a litmus test of do I want to show this person society like if there's somebody that goes fucking off the deep end about this movie then it's like okay then you I'm not building a society. I'm not gonna delve any further with you yeah it's it's not like a super gory movie no I think it's a good entry level horror movie like if you're showing if you if there you have someone in your life that's not huge on horror but it's like wants to explore like Show me a horror movie that's fun. I, I would say this is a good entry point horror movie for anybody. There's no nudity in it. It's not overly gory. Uh, it's not super scary. So, like, I think it's a good... Most ent- of it's, it's in good, daytime. It's got decent effects. Um, so it doesn't come off as, like, super cheesy. Sometimes it does. Like, when the, you see, like, the morph and the animorph style things happening. But, like, for the most part, the special effects were pretty good in this movie, which I was surprised by. I thought they were going to be a lot worse. Um, so, yeah, I think this is a good entry point. If you had to give it anything out of four stars, what would you rate it? I'd say... Mm, I'd say give it a solid two. I mean, it's... It's... Uh, it's unoffensive. It I Maybe unoffensive to a fault. I don't know, but not... It wasn't... I don't know. And that's weird for me saying unoffensive considering the amount of incest in this. Tons but, of incest. But, well, it, it was it was the tamest incest that you could possibly have in an incest movie. Society had incest in it, too. That was, that was why are we comparing incest. it to... Why are we comparing... Because it had incest in it. Okay. They both had incest. Anyways. Um, so anyways, that's the end of this review. Next week, my pick. I'm thinking we're going to do brain damage. But we'll see. But that could change. But right now, my thought process is going towards doing brain damage. I really want John to see that one. I think it'd be a fun one to review. I haven't seen it in a little while. So it'd be fun for me to refresh on it as well. Other than our reviews and stuff coming up, we have... Are we going to... Are we still doing September? Oh, my lordy. I think we might have to. We already called it. All right. So, soon coming up then, we have... In September, we're doing September, which we're doing all Uva Bowl movies. All September long. Uh, so, we're going to be doing Alone in the Dark, Blood Rain, uh, House of the Dead... And another one. <laughs> we'll uh, figure it out. Yeah. Uh, and then also we have Crypticon coming up. Yes. John won't be there for that. No, because uh, I have a... Never mind. <laughs> I have my co-host Angela coming with me for that. John won't be doing that. No. Uh, but we'll be doing a live podcast. We'll be playing a game called Straight to Hell, where we talk to the audience and they tell us their unpopular horror opinions that are, or things they hate about horror, or things they love about horror that other people hate. And they can win prizes by convincing us they're in the right. Um, so it's, it was a ton of fun last year, and we, we're blessed and 
fortunate enough to be able to get invited back to do it again this year. So we're very excited for that. So be on the lookout for new content. We've been posting more regularly recently. So we're doing pretty good. Hopefully it keeps up this way. Things happen. But that's it for this week. Our shortest episode ever. Yep. And you're asleep. Mm-hmm. So good night, everybody. Yep. I wish our tag, our outro tag could be Stay Creepy, but that's already taken by another podcast. Another good one. You should check out Nightmare on Film Street if you guys like horror movie podcasts, too, because Nightmare on Film Street is really good. Um, so we don't have a tagline, so I'm just going to say bye. Bye. Bye.